so now we come to what a 60 60 single port cell is but before we go to a 60 single port cell can you tell me what is the simplest and we discuss this in dvd also what is the simplest storage element that you know of stars latch latch yeah a latch and if you want to uh, you know store a desired data into it we call it as an sr latch hmm am i right this is how a sr latch looks like yes sir hmm now if i say that i want to clock it also hmm then i will put a clock some extra transistors come into picture which were which are clocked hmm now i say see actually me sr latch hai it is storing only one data the q and q bar are complementary expected to be complementary to each other hai na so mm, uh, what do you say uh, why have two pins two input pins r and s why can't we have just one so what is it called then d latch d latch where you say okay there is d and there is d bar and the output and the and you are storing q there and q bar is also available to you hmm now this d latch if i ask you to implement it in cmos logic can you do this for me d latch can you implement it in cmos logic for me quickly and tell me how many number of transistors you need you can put the number of transistors in the chat window d latch i want you to implement use complex gates no problem there use complex gates but implement it in full cmos logic how many transistors do you need raghav is saying 18 so 12 vaishnav is saying 12 okay so uh, 14 14 Okay, so eighteen. Uh, Lakshya is saying eighteen. Yes. Sachi, did you also make the inverter D to data bar inverter? So some of you are saying eighteen, some are saying fourteen, some are also saying twelve. So in reality, if you also need to make that inverter there, you would need fourteen devices. something like this so 12 devices for the complex gates and two devices for the inverter this is the cmos implementation hmm can you just quickly check if this meets the uh, if it is equivalent to the circuit that we saw earlier we have used complex gates here so it is 14 transistors but we wanted a six transistor memory cell this is the simplest clogged memory cell that we or uh, this is the simplest clogged storage element we are talking about but somehow everyone said srams would have six transistor cells so how do you reach six transistors mm -hmm. so what we say is that look for a memory when i am talking about a big memory there huh i need so there could be 1024 words in a memory but i want to access only one word at a time so in 1023 words the clock will not go so clock will be zero of the 1024 words one word i access in the 1023 words there is no there is going to be no clock so if clock is going to be zero then do you realize that this this transistors are almost always on if i assume that the probability of selection of any memory cell is equal or any word is equal then the probability of this transistor being off in any given cycle is 1 by 1000 let us say that's a low probability is it not so if i say that i want to save area anyways for 
more than 1000 cycles in 1024 or in fact 1023 cycles out of 1024 this transistor is going to be on so effectively what is happening vdd is getting transferred here in almost every cycle so only except the selected cell except the selected cell uh vdd in, in which whether vdd arrives here or not is dependent on these two transistors otherwise in all the other cells this node already has vdd are you able to see this yes, yes sir, sir. Hmm? so what i say is yeah this one cell the selected word we will look at it differently but to save area i am if i if i connect vdd there i save four transistors you see however when i remove those four to four pmoses on the top and put vdd here what happened see over here there were these transistors which carried d and d bar now they are no longer there hmm if these two transistors are no longer there then what happens i need to say that if d is equal to 1 over here initially when clock was 1 d was 1 what would have happened when clock was 1 and d was 1 this node would not have gone to vdd hai na because uh, both these transistors would have been off d was one clock was one so both these would have been off but now this is vdd over here so what my what happens it means when i want to write zero on to q bar it will be difficult now because there is this pmos which is connecting vdd here so now even though i saved area my ability to write into latch has degraded and it has kind of become ratioed sizing so i have to take care of sizing of this pmos and the strength of these devices to say whether i am able to write zero in the memory cell or not are you with me yes sir so please repeat the last part <clears throat> so what we are saying is that because this pmos is on now i want to write a zero here it means initially there was one here if it was one here then the zero was written on this side are you able yes. to see this Yes, If zero was written on this side. It means this PMOS was conducting current. Yes, sir. Now you want to write a zero over here. So what this means? D is equal to one, C K equal to one. You want to sync the current. Yes, sir. I will be able to sync the sufficient current only when the strength of this PMOS is smaller yes. than the strength of this stack of N MOSs. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. so sizing of the devices now plays a role in the functionality of the memory cell yeah okay yes sir to save area i have to now take care of sizing but the area gains are humongous you see instead of 14t you are you reduced four transistors from there humongous area gains so you want to maintain that now let's look at now that we are here now that we are here let's look at what else can we do to save area so the first thing we do is we just simply re reorganize this cell now if you look at it this is an inverter now these two are inverters so i can actually reorganize the cell as something like this are you able to see this i simply uh, kind of picked this stack up and rotated it so that it appears like this i have also put the clock terminal inside and the data terminal outside it doesn't change the functionality per se hmm so now i say that see memory cells are organized in an array so let me look at an array view now so this is what my array view would be a two cross row two set of storage elements now i say that uh see if i now when we looked at the memory array what did we say i will have one data pin here it will be able to write into all the memory cells 
and it will write into that particular memory cell where the word line is selected do you remember this yes sir hai na so i am saying that in reality there is only one data pin per column so this is d2 then this is also d2 and if this is d1 then this is also d1 what that means is i can pull these inverters out of this memory cell so my 14t memory cell is now appearing to be 8t memory cell with no loss of functionality as of now except that i have some sizing constraints built in now all that i did is i shared the inverters across columns i can do that is it okay yes sir okay. so then what we do is we say ah uh, see there is this d1 over here there is this d1 over here d1 bar over here d1 bar over here d2 over here d2 over here so there is some additional element which has the same same vertical behavior can i do something about it and i pull this d1 nmos and d1 bar nmos and d2 nmos and d2 bar nmos outside again into the common area and bingo i appear to have a 60 cell now hmm it is just that instead of calling this as a clock we call this as a word line and these vertical signals are called bit lines hmm and this d1 d2 these nmoses these are now available not inside the memory cell but in the io region and we will call them write drivers is that okay any questions clear sir can you repeat the part where the inverters were shared across the columns okay so if you look at that side what did we say we said that uh in reality because there is only one data pin per column hmm so i have to access only one word and i know because we looked at memory organization earlier we know that in a memory we need one data pin per column or per multiple columns actually hai na if there is a mux then only one data pin is needed so in reality this d2 is not going to be different from d1 okay so if 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 it is going to be d1 only then why put two inverters and put an inverter in every row put that inverter down there so we yes. put this inverter down here then we looked at this set of nmoses we said oh these nmoses have the same signal so i shared them also and i came to this stage is this clear uh sir so when we were removing those uh, clock transistor when you were saying only one will have clock out of 1024 transistors but sir humko pata thodi hai ki isi pe aayega to iske hata dete नहीं हम तो सबका हटा रहे हैं ना इसलिए दैट इज वाई रिमूव इट फॉर एवरी वन ओके ओके ओनली फॉर वन सेल ना वी रिमूव इट फॉर एवरी वन ओके ओके एंड वी सेड वी ब्रिंगिंग इन साइजिंग कंस्ट्रेंट नाउ यस सर ओके सर सर यू हैव मेंशन द क्लॉक्स एस डिफरेंट क्लॉक क्लॉक वन एंड क्लॉक टू सो सर जो हमारी इंटरनल क्लॉक जनरेट होती है वो हमारे रोड डिकोडर में जाएगी एंड बेस्ड अपॉन माय एड्रेस बिट्स वो फिल कनेक्ट होगी इन बोर्ड लाइन से मतलब 
सो बट मतलब ये दो दे दैट इज व्हाट इज डीकोडिंग ना डीकोडिंग मींस एड्रेस की इंफॉर्मेशन के बेसिस पे आप कुछ सेलेक्ट करोगे सो बट टेक्निकली दे आर नॉट डिफरेंट क्लॉक्स राइट देयर डिफरेंट वर्ड लाइंस बट कनेक्टिंग टू द सेम क्लॉक लाइक डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द एड्रेस बिट या सो यू गिव क्लॉक ओनली टू द सिलेक्टेड वर्ड ना ओके सो बट दे एक्चुअली इफ देयर इज ओनली वन क्लॉक इट इज ओनली कनेक्टेड कनेक्टेड टू डिफरेंट वर्ड लाइंस डिपेंडिंग अपॉन दैट या यस ओके Now, because word lines which are not clocks, that is why we change the name from CK1, CK2 to WL1, WL2. Yes, sir. These are decoded signals, but they are clocked. But only when the clock comes will you get the word line, is it not? Yes, sir. So they can be considered as clocks also. For this particular memory cell, it is like a clock. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Clear. any further questions sir bl1 is bit line 1 bl b1 is bit line bar so q and q bar bit line and bit line bar so so uh, in this io region the d1 and d1 dash transistors will be called as write diapers or this whole structure this inverter d1 and d1 transistor Yeah, yeah. So we'll come to that later. Doesn't matter. It's a, it's a point. It's what it would be called as whatever. <laughs> okay. Okay. See, have you understood the concept? That is what my question is. Whether we call all these uh, four transistors as a right driver, or there are ten other transistors that also come into picture, we're not even talking about that yet. No, right driver design is a separate thing. We'll look at it later. But yeah, this becomes a part of the right driver. Okay, so there could be other stuff also there. It's not memory design is not so simple as I've uh, made it appear to you. Don't worry. <laughs> Go into more details. I'm going into details slowly so that you don't get overwhelmed by ये क्या हो गया. Sure, sir. So with this, now we say that my one memory cell has only six transistors. Where there is bit line, bit line bar, and word line, they are the three interfaces. Some some things that go out and in. They they carry information in and out of the memory cell. They control the memory cell. And then inside the memory cell, you have the Q pin and the Q prime, Q bar pin. You could also call it Q bar, whatever. Okay. So now, how do you read and write into the memory cell? See, until the time it was a B latch, you knew you would get a one at the Q pin and a zero at the Q bar. But now Q and Q bar are no longer accessible. Now I just said, now said that word line, bit line, and bit line bar are the only ports that you have. The user can no longer access Q and Q bar. So how does he read? Hmm? How does he read? So through WL and bit line. Yes. 